Hey everybody, this is your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in the line of how to play the U.S. Navy battleships. This is the North Carolina class, of which there were two battleships produced during World War II, the Washington and the North Carolina. The Washington is most famous for the Battle of Guadalcanal, in which at night she managed to sink the Congo-class battleship Kirishima. In that fight, she fired 75 16-inch shells and 107 5-inch shells from her 5-inch dual-purpose guns. She hit the Kirishima with 20 of those 16-inch shells and only 17 of the 5-inch rounds, sinking the Kirishima. She closed to 5,800 yards in that fight. This is one of the few U.S. battleship-to-battleship -battleship fights of World War II. In World of Warships... This is the first U.S. fast battleship that you get to play. And with that, we need to talk about how that's going to change the play style. First, the armor scheme of the North Carolina class, the Iowa class, and the Montana class is such that they don't take hits nearly as well as some of the earlier U.S. battleships do in this game. With that in mind, they are a lot less forgiving of exposing your broadside to enemy battleships because you can get citadel a lot easier. In fact, in the Montana video, I will lodge one of my biggest complaints about that ship being that you basically can't angle it. Uh, the North Carolinas, though, thankfully can, and they actually do really well for their tier, considering that you're going to end up facing off against tier 10 battleships in it. With, with that said, the playstyle is also different in the fact that this is one of the first battleships that actually has enough speed to have some utility. Basically, the U.S. battleships prior to, you pick a direction and you have to go that way because you're 21 knots and can't really turn around and, and influence a battle any other way than just going in that one direction because you just don't have the speed to get back. Well, the North Carolina changes that. You've got a little bit more utility for your lack of armor. You've also got more range, which is, this is the first time the stock ship will hit uh, right around 20 kilometers with the upgrades you get to 21.1. They are 16 inch guns, which is nice. The ship also does have a lot of hit points, which if you remember, the Colorado actually has less hit points than the New Mexico, so we at least get a step up from that. Again, with the 16-inch guns with the 21.1 stock range, 23.3 upgraded range. They are firing the Mark 8 16-inch super heavy armor-piercing capped shell, which is nice. This is the same shell that you will find the Iowa and the Montana shooting. You do also have the 5 on each side, 2 barrel per... 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose mounts, which also serve as your part of your AA defense. Really, again, secondaries, they, they kick in at such a short range. Here you're seeing captain skills factored in. The default firing range is only 5 kilometers, so not, not exactly uh, long-range secondaries, but that's been standard for this game all the way up until this point. In terms of anti-aircraft capabilities, this is where this ship really shines. So the Colorado had very workable anti-aircraft suite. The North Carolina takes that even further. Even the default hold North Carolina, which doesn't have a whole lot of anti-aircraft guns, has a really strong anti-aircraft suite for its tier. At tier 8, this thing with the right upgrades and the right captain skills will absolutely destroy aircraft. Even tier 10 aircraft, which you wouldn't think they normally would be able to. They can, which is nice. And it's one of the primary defenses for this ship. With that said, the U.S. fast battleships don't have as much torpedo protection as the standards did. So your torpedo defense is, again, going to be anti-aircraft capability and shooting down those aircraft before they get to you, as well as being able to shoot at the destroyers before they get to you. For a fast battleship, she does go basically 28 knots. She does have a relatively tight turning circle of 760 meters and a relatively quick rudership time of 12 and a half seconds. She changes directions really well, and that's one of her strong suits. 
like I said, the fast battleships have a little bit more utility, but you trade off the ability to take hits. So it's not as big of a damage sink as, say, the New Mexico is, which it just takes hits like it's going out of style. Concealment, well, it's a battleship. Shouldn't have to really talk about that much because you're not exactly going to be hidden. Upgrades-wise, all the upgrades are going to look basically the same as the Colorado's, and the reason for that is because all of the upgrade slots that actually matter are exactly the same. Again, my recommendation is Main Battery Modification 1, AAM Gun Modification 2, Damage Control Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2. This last slot is the 2 million credit upgrade. You have two choices. Concealment Modification 1, which reduces your detectability range by 10%, and Target Acquisition Systems Modification 1. If you were to have to choose between these two, I would choose the Target Acquisition System Modification 1, but for 2 million credits, it's a real tough pill to swallow when you're on your fight to the Iowa, because the Iowa is so close now. Really... All that acquisition range is, is if something is being detected by another ship, you can see it further away. It doesn't help you see destroyers. It doesn't help you see cruisers or other battleships unless they've already been spotted by something else. Basically, it just extends how far you can see ships to plus 20%. With that said you'll find that the only reason it's on my Iowa is because I had one from my Arkansas Beta. It's not on my Montana. It's just not an important slot to me. I don't really see much use for that slot for battleships. For other ships, certainly. So with that said, the you know we're going to go into the, vid the battle video here. Just keep in mind, again, that the U.S. standards allow you a little bit of leeway in how you played you could take hits. You could kind of expose your broadside a little bit and get away with it. The North Carolinas start the line of fast battleships off to where you don't have that flexibility anymore. It, you, if you choose to go a direction, you need to understand that in order for you to get out of that situation, you're going to have to risk getting Citadel hits because you don't have the armor to, to mitigate that. It does deflect shots very well from a head-on or slight angle, which is nice, but by the same token, all the other ships could do that too. It's just you don't have the side armor to actually take any hits broadside, whereas the standards could. So with that, you, you got to plan a little bit further ahead, but the nice part about it is once you're in a situation, it, if you've got an opening and you can get out of there, you get out of there relatively quickly because you got 28 knots of speed to use. And with that utility, you can actually impact a larger area of a battle because you can go to some place realize that that may not be the best place to be turn around and go you know a different direction with it and still have time to to influence the battle whereas with the standards at 20 20 20 and a half to 21 knots you really didn't so let's go ahead and go into that battle video and we'll talk about more stuff All right, in this battle, well, it's not really, really fair comparison, but the, in terms of teams, the, the teams are actually pretty even, and that's one of the great things about this match. We're down, we, they have an extra tier 8 uh, battleship, and we don't. That's okay. It seems like, for the most part, we've got a little bit more of the DPS stuff. Of note, uh, Hiryu and Ryojo, both of them lower tier, so... While this isn't overly representative of what the anti-aircraft capabilities of this ship is capable of doing, the carriers send enough aircraft at me that you get an idea of just how effective it really can be. Also, this isn't one of my best damage videos in this ship. In fact, I only ended at like 89,000 or so, which really isn't that great for a damage match. But the one thing that I do want to point out is this match that this match points out is the utility of the ship and how you can change direction to influence a battle in different ways. 
as this match goes on, it'll become a little bit more clear, but basically the enemy carriers go after our carriers right away, and I'm a little out of position because I'm following the rest of our group, but I'm able to kind of get back to our carriers to provide a little bit of AA support. I'm also able to kind of thin out the herd as the aircraft come back to their carriers because their carriers aren't redirecting their aircraft away from ships with any aircraft capabilities. Uh, I do Good luck, everyone. enjoy taunting, especially since he's talking about how he's psyched that is he's got three times experience on his hear you, which I can only imagine is because of the Confederate flag, which good for him. But go ahead and send him at me, right? That's that's what I'm getting at. Just a little bit of playful banter back and forth. Like we talked about in the first part of this video, the U.S. fast battleships do not have a whole lot of uh, bolt. Well, bulge armor, and they don't have a whole lot of uh, belt armor. The bulge armor we won't really see. I don't think I ever get hit with a torpedo on this. It's a couple of close calls, but nothing uh, super. Nothing that actually contacts. Nothing super painful. Uh, but the belt armor that that does get kind of shown in this video a little bit. Uh, you'll see a turpitz actually manages to pen the armor on it and do some pretty good damage, actually, all things considered. Apparently they tried making me uh, the uh, primary target, or however you want to call that, but obviously he doesn't know how to spell. Our first customer of the day is a Cleveland, and this, these first shots in the beginning are, are, I almost want to call them cheap shots, basically. It's like, well, they can't see me, and most people aren't even paying attention, so this is a perfect opportunity to exploit the fact that I've got some range. And I've got pretty good accuracy. Look at that tight Confirmed spread. Five hits, 10,873 damage on a Cleveland. No Citadels. If I would have let him a little bit less, I probably would have got him. The Cleveland Citadel is actually towards the back of the ship, and that impacted pretty much in the middle. I got an Aoba up here that I'm hoping I can catch off guard too, but I, don't, I ended up missing him. So this is when I start to notice that our uh, carriers have a bunch of aircraft going towards them. we got a Cleveland that's trying to thin them out a little bit, which is good on him for actually getting back and trying, but I need to get back over there. Especially since we don't want to lose our carriers, especially with how uh, you know utilitarian and how useful they are to the team. So I want to get back over there. I want to get involved in this anti-aircraft fight, mostly because I have the AA capability to do it, but because... We need our carriers for this match to succeed. I also noticed that their whole team is basically pushing on this one side, and in doing so, we don't really have anything covering our rear. So for me to be able to float back and forth between the main battle group and the carriers is really nice to be able to do that, and the Iowa excels at this even better. One, the Iowa's AA suite is impressive, even for a tier 9. Fully upgraded with all the AA upgrades, the Iowa will actually eat tier 10 aircraft reasonably well. Not a whole lot of combat. Like I said, this, this game wasn't a whole lot of raw damage so much as it was straight up utility, just showing how versatile these ships are. I mean, you've seen me do lots of damage. You can those matches don't don't tell you a whole lot about the capabilities of a ship when you're looking at something that is so different from the ship before it. You know, the U.S. standards, the Colorado, and all the way down to the Wyoming at Tier 4. They are very much one-trick ponies. I mean, even the Colorado's great AA, which makes me shudder to think. And, I, you know, I haven't played it since the they updated the turret rotation speed and the reload time. I'm sure it's become a, quite a useful ship now. But they're, they're very much, I'm going to go in one area, I'm going to lock everything down in that area, I can take hits reasonably well. That's about the extent of their utility. They don't have the speed to be able to cross multiple parts of the map and, and influence the battle in more than just one way. With the fast battleships, you can use that speed, in this case 28 knots, which I'm not sure I ever actually get to. I spent a lot of time maneuvering. You can use that speed to, to get back into a battle. Okay, I'm playing cleanup now with the aircraft, but... 
we'll start to get into a little bit better AA battle here pretty soon. So like I said, beginning part not terribly uh, entertaining. Also, unlike the standards, you know, you, you don't have a whole lot of that belt armor, so you can't sit there and take hits at the broadside and, and kind of get away from, or get away with it. Better way of stating that. Get away with it without getting Citadel hits. The standards are just, they just can take those hits. The fast battleships, you traded that ability for the ability to influence the battle in more than just one way. The other interesting part about this is that uh, being a U.S. fast battleship, your primary design purpose was to escort carriers. So here I am doing something realistic and being a team player. Oh my. What's next? Cats and dogs living together? I mean, that, that's entirely possible too. Just kind of weird. kind of hoping some of these ships that were approaching from over there would you know, be a little bit more um, aggressive, for lack of a better phrase, and hurry up and get over here. By this point, the enemy's aircraft carriers are no longer interested in our aircraft carriers, so I'm going to once again use my speed to kind of influence a different area of this battle. I'm still keeping this fleet that's off on the 7 to 10 line from engaging our carriers by presenting a much more threatening target. I'm also able to quickly duck over there if any aircraft were to push through, but they end up not pushing through. In fact, our carriers remain relatively untouched through the rest of this match. Captain Slow. That's appropriate. That's really appropriate. One, I love Top Gear, but two, it's Colorado. That won't make any sense later, but... Finally got something to shoot at. Oh, we got Naoba too. You will notice that the North Carolina shot pattern is really, really tight. For a battleship at this tier, I actually really like how tight the shot pattern is on this, which is weird because if you look at the stats, it's really not that much tighter, you know, at least on paper, than the Iowa and the Montanas are. I mean, the Iowa and Montana have essentially the same shot dispersion, although they don't seem to play that way. Also, gotta love the high angle guns. Now, if you're paying attention, which I really hope you were, the there is a Cleveland coming down the crack, which in Two Brothers is like a suicide run. But I also have these friendly ships in front of me, so I, I figure, you know, we can dive in here and be and at least keep this turpits from getting any cap. And our carriers are doing a good job of making him pay for his incidents as well. Once again, very good shot pattern. Six hits for uh, 11,000 damage. Yeah, buddy. <coughs> I have a little bit of a cold. Here's a Colorado and I playing ballet. Eee! Do not want. The only thing from a Colorado that I would want on this ship is the armor. The belt armor. That's about it. You can keep everything else. Three hits for 7,700 damage. The Turp suffers from... Suffers rather poorly from shell penetration issues. It's got a lot of armor, which is really nice for deflecting hits. The problem is, is in doing so, you don't ever overpen with <laughs> you don't ever overpen a Colorado. Sorry, turpins very easily. This Hatsuharu is making a very convenient place for me to hang out. It's destroyed the Cleveland that came down the, the crack, so I'm gonna hang out in the smoke a little bit and, and play like I play my destroyers. 
Interestingly enough, though, my team, for whatever reason, isn't being uh, overly good at spotting teams. I'd like to pop this Atlanta, but, you know, the Atlanta's a little bit of a squirrely ship. It's kind of hard to citadel at times. It just it feels that way, and with the shot dispersion on this thing, it does. Here we go. Get some aircraft to finally come at us, and they just kind of get withered down here. Yep, there goes another. There goes another. There goes another. Oh, Colorado! Broadside! There goes another aircraft. Get out of the smoke here. We want to go forward. And this demonstrates quite effectively what the armor on the standards is like. noticed he, uh, he took those hits and didn't really do a whole lot of damage. 8k for, I think it was three or four hits. I'm just kind of chilling in the smoke. I mean, this is this is like one of the best things ever. He's one of DD pop smoke for you. Uh, get the opportunity. Oh, crap. The smoke went away. Well, it keeps sending those aircraft at me. Now that I'm out in the open and I'm stationary, it's imperative that I get moving again, especially since that armor is not exactly thick or effective. And you know, we're start seeing some large numbers pop up as the Sayoba rakes my deck with HE fire. This is me still trying to Citadel of Colorado at seven and a half kilometers. Three hits for AK. Not bad. But look at how rapidly you lose. There's a weird hit. I bounced a bunch of those shells. Torpedoes, direct front. I don't like Aobas. They have torpedoes. In fact, that other Aoba is unpleasantly kind, if you want to call it that. To do that. And good night. Enemy cruiser foundered. Confederate! Oh, Woo! And here's the close call. <laughs> now, in real life, if that torpedo would have hit, it would have probably never gone off. Yep, there goes two more aircraft. Colorado shooting HE at me. 7K with HE. I kind of think that HE is like too effective in this game, but. We destroyed an enemy Colorado. battleship. Now, a large portion of the rest of this match is spent trying to chase the Sayoba. It's kind of my fault for that. But like I said, it's not a. It wasn't a match with a whole lot of damage. Our to victory is in sight. Five K. Proof that 16-inch Mark 8 16-inch doesn't over penetrate. Now he does a really good job of evading. Look at that shot! Holy crud! He does a really good job of evading. For, well, ever. Yeah, I think he survives this match, which is really rather frustrating, but what do you do? You can only do so much damage. You can only pray for R and Jesus to bless my shots and home in on him. Oh, yes. Now he's making excuses. For the record. The only ship in this game that actually shot down more... God, that shot... Group. The only thing that shot down more aircraft than me in this match was our carrier. One of our carriers. And he shot down 25. The Clevelands shot down 10 and 15, respectively. So, he may say that it was his air... The cruisers oh, must did it, and I was just cleaning fire. up. That's not the way it was with my first time. I was sitting in that smoke, those aircraft that were falling out of the sky, the last, like, what was that? 12, 13 aircraft? Oh, fighter, ready for takeoff. Definitely not. Definitely not from that.
But you can see it didn't take a whole lot of time for this AOBA to this and the other AOBA uh, Colorado shooting HE at me to really burn me down with the, the damage. And these things have so many aircraft guns on the deck. These things have so many aircraft guns on the deck that they uh, tend, to, tend to take a lot of module damage, which is why HE is so effective right away, and then it kind of tapers off a little bit. In fact, a lot of people notice that with the Iowa's armor being, quote, bugged, which they fixed and completely ruined the Iowa. But basically, what was happening was is the Iowa, you would take so much damage on your superstructure, and then it would stop taking damage altogether. HE would no longer do damage to it. And that's because it had reached a saturated point where there's basically nothing alive in, in the armor anymore. Or in that section of the hole anymore. And that's kind of the end of the game. That was, like I said, really uneventful in terms of damage, but check these numbers out. So the here you shot down 30. The next closest was in Atlanta at 15, sorry. The, the other Cleveland was at 9, 10. 90,000 damage, it's all right. You can kind of get a feel from this how what the utility is, though. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.